What's up, coaster fans, and welcome to my review of Mako, the newest coaster at SeaWorld Orlando and the ride that people consider one of B&M's best. This was the last B&M in the country other than Apocalypse slash Firebird that I had not ridden. So really, it was the last good B&M that I hadn't ridden. So I planned a trip to Florida in late October 2018 to ride it. This would be my second trip to SeaWorld Orlando. I was there once before in January of 2012 to ride the other great B&Ms in the park, Kraken and Manta. These coasters put SeaWorld Orlando on the map, but Mako really solidified it as a place that coaster enthusiasts had to visit while visiting the Disney and Universal parks in Orlando. It's Tuesday, July, th oops, take two. It is Tuesday, October 30th, leaving Best Western, and we are headed to our last park of the trip, which is SeaWorld Orlando. On October 30th, we arrived at SeaWorld on a warm and clear day and went straight to the back of the park to hit Mako first. They were only running one train, but it was a Tuesday in October, so the crowds were light enough for it not to matter. I'm a backseat fan on most coasters, and this is no exception. So I sought out rows 7 and 8 on all 10 of my rides that day. Front seat can be good for some things, but I hate sacrificing the airtime you get while being dragged over the first drop, and Mako has one of the great first drops I have ever been on. If you have enough room, you'll be flying out of your seat before violently landing at the bottom before you rocketing up into that first big left-hand turn, diving down into one of the most incredible airtime moments I've ever experienced. You start flying out of your seat before you crest this massive airtime hill, and you don't land until you hit the bottom. This provides five full seconds of airtime, and trust me, I counted. You pull up into the hammerhead turnaround, which brings the out and back track really close to each other. So on the next couple hills, if you're sitting on the right side of the train, it really feels like you're gonna slam right into it. The next hill has decent airtime despite the trims, which slow you down a little, but in the back you still feel the airtime as it's dragging you over the top. Another hill leads into a turn to the right into one of the more unique elements of this coaster, which is the speed hill. A lot of enthusiasts love this as it provides some good ejector air, which is definitely true, but it's nothing too special or spectacular. You then pop into the brake run, which is actually super weird because when you're sitting in the back, you're floating when the brakes kick in and it'll throw your body forward, so be warned. Don't end up like me where I jam my thumb into the lap bar because my hand was in a bad spot when the train started to decelerate. The brake run really causes Mako to lose its speed for the remainder of the ride. You dive off the brake run into a weak airtime hill, into two overbanked turns which actually provide some decent lateral airtime, and then you slide into the final brakes. Mako is not the tallest, fastest, or longest ride, but there is something about it that makes it stand out from the other B&M hypers like Behemoth or Intimidator, which I didn't find anything really special about. It definitely has a great drop that five second airtime hill, and the speed hill, as well as some other solid airtime on its other hills. It also has a good setting as it zips around the perimeter of the lake and provides some great views of the surrounding area, as well as Kraken. It also has a good queue, a cool station with the shark swimming above your head, a great color scheme, and a good theme. This is definitely the best coaster in Florida. So where does it rank in my top 50? It actually cracks my top 10. I rank this just ahead of Raging Bull and place it behind B&M Hypers like Apollo's Chariot and Diamondback. It has so many great scenic and airtime moments, but really could be better in several areas, especially since there's not much to get excited about after the brake run. A couple other notes about Mako. The staff the day I went was really laid back and even commented how they liked my camera glasses. There's no assigned seating, the ops don't staple you like they do on Behemoth at Canada's Wonderland and they do have baskets on the other side of the station where you can easily store your stuff. Little things like this make the ride so much more enjoyable. Uh -oh. get Mako. Let me know what you think of Mako in the comments below and where this ranks on the list of B&M hypers for you. Also be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you all next time.